Hi, I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of PC Magazine, and welcome to a special edition of One Cool Thing. Today was Apple iPhone Day. That means that the most powerful and largest company in the world has released, has released new versions of its most important product. We're gonna break down what that means to you, and I'm gonna do it with my esteemed colleagues here. Oh, we're esteemed. You are esteemed. Um, if These lights are really hot, so we're gonna be esteemed in about 15 <laughs> minutes if we don't get through this oh show. Uh, Victoria Song, consumer electronics analyst and wearables expert. Yes. And Alex Cologne, managing editor of consumer electronics and co-host of The Phone Show. We're gonna be talking about phones, so it's really good to have you here. Hi, so, I'm, I'm ready to do it. So they just made the announcement. I just wanna get through all of the products and like the bare minimum about them, and then we'll talk about what they mean, uh, how impressed we were with the presentation, what some of the key features were. I found some things in this presentation that surprised me, so um, we'll get to those in just a minute. But the biggest uh, announcement, probably the iPhone XS. Uh, starts at $1,000, $999, uses the new A12 CPU, has a super retina display, 5.8 inch display, and is available September 21st. Its larger cousin, the iPhone, iPhone 10 S Max, starts at uh, 1099, also uses the A12 CPU, same super retina display, but is 6.5 inches, available on the 21st. A low cost iPhone XR starts at 749, uses the A12 CPU, but cheats a little bit on the display, uses an LCD display, only has a single camera system, but that's how you make the $750 price point. And then the Apple Watch Series 4, 30% larger display, I think is the biggest difference, most noticeable difference, but then a whole host of more sensitive sensors and little features built into that, including an EKG, which is, I think, pretty cool. That starts at $399 and it ships on $921. And then the other news, iOS 12 also uh, is going to be shipping on September 17th. So a suite of new products, new, new iPhones, and a new Apple Watch. They want, they, Apple started with the Apple Watch, so maybe we start there. Did, is, did you get what you expected from the Series 4? Well, you know, um, actually news about the Series 4 kind of leaked right beforehand. News um, about everything leaked. Every, yeah, I mean, like it leaked. So yeah, it was what I expected <laughs> okay. because of the leaks. Um, we did see, uh, like you mentioned, the screens are 35% or 32% bigger. Um, the actual case sizes are bigger as well. So they used to be 38 millimeters and 42 millimeters. Now we're having 40 millimeters and 44 millimeters. And that's great from the perspective of you're gonna be able to see more on your wrist. Mm -hmm. um, like I've got the Fitbit Versa on now and you can see that there's like a really huge bezel on there. Um, what's really cool with this new uh, Series 4 watch is that you basically don't have a bezel. You have a lot more screen real estate to play around with things. Um, one of the new watch faces is gonna have eight complications, eight complications, which so, is pretty complicated. So what are, we should, you should explain what complications were, because a couple of people I was, sit, I was sitting with was like, why are we, why are complications a good thing and why do we need more of them? <laughs> so complications, um, they're basically like tiny little widgets that you can see directly from the watch face. So like, let's say, um, one of the things that they were uh, highlighting. We've got it up on the big board there. Yeah, like one of the things that they were highlighting is that you'll be able to put and customize different things that will make it really easy from a glance to see like your steps if you're super into fitness or you know like it'll just make it easier for you to just tap your wrist and be able to go into your music or just tap your wrist and to be able to see what your calendar looks like so it, it just makes it easier to take a glance and know what's up from your watch so the, the, the Apple Watch, we were talking a little bit before the announcement because we thought something was going to be coming. I was kind of poo-pooing the market and saying, yeah, it's the number one smartwatch on the market, but the smartwatch market's been kind of a disappointment. Um, and you said, well, actually, there's a lot of people that really love the Apple Watch and are committed to it. Well, yeah, like, it's funny because um, we have a bunch of people in the office who are big Apple Watch fans. Like, our cameraman is <laughs> the biggest Apple Watch fan I know. A lot of people in my life are huge Apple Watch fans. Um, they use it all the time. Um, and especially since the LTE version came out, like I was surprised to see that a lot of people really value that because they don't want to carry their phone on runs. So like that, I personally was not a huge fan of the Series 3's battery life, especially with LTE. I had a 30 minute phone call while testing and it went from 100 to zero in 30 minutes. So that's, that's not great, but you know, um, 
the Apple Watch is just convenient. If you're an iPhone user, there's no smartwatch that more seamlessly just builds into the entire experience. You can get everything like super easily. When I am testing Apple Watches, it's super fun because I am an iPhone user and it's just like, my life is so much easier. Everything just kind of works seamlessly. Um, although it is worth pointing out, they did say that the Series 4 is going to have the same battery life as yeah. the Series yes. 3, which is kind of You were bummer. expecting them to kick it up just a little bit. Even well, like a, an hour, like yeah. give me an hour. Like it, it was actually just like one of the things I was looking for because um, I think I tweeted out like, this all means nothing unless you bump up the battery life. Yeah. And that's especially true when I think about the heart rate, um, the heart health like features that they rolled out. They, I think they rolled out, uh, what, what's new is that they're saying that you can get notifications if your heart rate is low, um, notifications if your heart rate is irregular, and they've actually built in electrodes into the back so that you can do the ECGs. Mm -hmm. um, all of that's kind of useless unless you have really good battery life. So what is it, what is it now? Like, is it, is it 16 hours of battery life that they say? 18, 18, 18. which is not all day. Like, not quite all day. It's not quite all day. Especially six months after owning it, the battery life's going to be down yeah. a little bit, yeah. and you're going to be charging it at least every day. Well, also, you, you can't track your sleep. No, yeah, you can't. You, know, you need 24 sleep. hours that's, if you're going to do an entire day. And yeah. the sleep tracking, I think, is one of the most compelling things about smartwatches and the platform is to have that 24-hour record. Also, a good battery life is going to be key to people sticking with a wearable. One of like when I did my uh, DE fit feature about like why people don't stick with their wearables, battery life is a huge thing because having to charge something, having to have a proprietary charger with you in your bag every day, it's, it's a big reason why like I actually plan when I'm going to sleep and when I do stuff based around when I have to charge this thing and this thing has a four to five day battery life. Yeah. If you're with an Apple Watch, if you're doing a run, you're gonna get maybe 12 hours max. You're gonna wanna carry that charger with you, uh, especially if you have a bunch of events during the day. So it's just, it, you're gonna get two days out of it maximum, and it's just, it's not gonna be consistent. Also, you don't get continuous heart rate monitoring with the Apple Watch. You only get it once every 10 minutes or so, and oh, the, I didn't realize that. the continuous okay. heart rate is only when it detects that you're actually running. So when it comes to data, it's, it's spot checking. Okay, data. I didn't realize that. I thought it was gonna be perpetual um, yeah. throughout the process. Now, continuous heart rate monitoring is a huge drain on battery. So it's just like, not a thing that people yeah, necessarily so they did not, realize. So the battery life, I think you correctly assess, is the number one complaint about the Apple Watch, and that's not been resolved here. No. I mean, it didn't get any better. Um, that said, like the, the host of health features that they loaded into this thing, you know, the ability to, to detect atrial fibr fibrillation is pretty extraordinary and actually send you an alert and say, you know what, you're having some kind of heart issue, you should relax, calm down, and possibly go see a doctor. I want to see. Neat. I want to see how that works out in testing. I'm a little more skeptical. Because the FDA <laughs> approved it. The FDA like did approve it. They put those big it. FDA numbers up on the screen. So like, I have mixed feelings because getting FDA approval is a big hurdle for wearables makers. Like we've seen a bunch of um, more medical based devices come out at like shows like CES and CE Week and just all a bunch of things. And um, FDA approval is a big reason why we don't have blood pressure monitors mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. Like it has to be accurate. Um, but when it comes to like heart health, consistency is really important. When you take the EKG is gonna be important. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing, having a plan with your doctor is gonna be important. And also being able to show your doctor this information, they're just gonna look at a bunch of charts and go, what am I looking at? Yeah. So it's. Well, we'll see. Uh, should we just pause here and take a question? Yeah. Do you think that they would ever come out with a round uh, face for the Apple Watch, or is this like too much part of their brand that squarish Have design? Courage, friends, abandon the circular face. <laughs> no, um, the circular face is definitely a more classic look. Um, when we talk to people, uh, or at least when anyone asks me about smartwatches and wearables, they always go, "Do they have a circular face?" But I. Th I think we're going to be stuck with the square going forward. Uh, it's the most popular sm selling smartwatch and watch, and it's going to be a square face. They have no reason to make it circular. Yeah. And, uh, and Watch, o Watch OS 5 has got all of its interfaces are cued around that, that square face. Yep. I, my question was with that, you know, they made a big thing about taking advantage of that extra real estate to add mm -hmm. all these different interfa interface uh, complications. Um, what do you, are we going to be able to use that same OS on earlier versions of the watch? Yes, you are. You are going to be able to use uh, watchOS 5 on earlier versions of the watch, but you probably won't get 
some of the uh, Series 4 specific features like fall detection, because that requires right. the upgraded sen sensors and, and you know the EKG stuff, it's not going to work with optical heart rate only. So. So, and so that was the other feature I wanted to talk about, fall detection. Mm -hmm. That was unexpected. I had no idea that they were going to do that. Um, they improve the accelerometers and they can detect when you're falling and then can call for help if, you are, or if yeah. you're prone. I mean, you guys are so lucky that I'm, I'm testing because I'm the world's biggest klutz. So I will fall down. <laughs> Do you have an emergency contact? <laughs> no, but we'll, we'll work it out. Um, so like all of these features make me think that the Apple Watch is gonna be really great for elderly consumers. And if you're looking for a Christmas gift for your grandma or grandpa, this is a really compelling use case for it compared to other wearables. Like, I don't know, if you wanna be a good kid, get your, get your parents an Apple so Watch. So here's a question, and I don't mean, uh, do you think that elderly people will be able to figure out how to use that interface? Yes. I All do. Right. All right. At Ask the and very, answer. At the very least, they'll be able to go, oh, this is the time. Cool. That's true. They'll be able to use the watch <laughs> functionality without yeah. additional complications. Um, we can get back to the Apple Watch, but I want to talk a little bit about the, the iPhone, too, because that is the most important product in Apple's portfolio. It generates almost 70% of all of their revenue. A hugely important product, um, the iPhone XS. Not a, it's an S year, so it's not a huge uh, improvement over last year. Right. Um, but wh what was your take? Were you disappointed? Did, was it about what you expected? Well, I'll tell you what I'm disappointed in, and I am disappointed in the price. Uh, there were rumors that it could have been cheaper. I was really hoping it was going to be cheaper because I'm, I have an old iPhone right here. I'm planning to upgrade this year. I'm going to have to spend at least a thousand bucks to do it. To get a ten, to get a 10s. Right. And so they announced three new iPhones today. Um, of the two new ones, the least you could spend is $1,000. Um, if you want the 10R, that one starts at $749. Um, but I really feel like with these three phones, they're pushing you away from that 10R. Okay. Like they want this $1,000 phone to be the new default iPhone. Um, and that I find disappointing. I mean, we, when it came out a year ago, I was there at the Apple event and you know, I was trying to make a, an assessment of how valuable these new features were, how valuable this front-facing uh, depth uh, sensor camera was. And I was like, you know, I don't think anybody's going to buy a thousand dollar camera, but Apple users, some of them will buy anything. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what happened in the market. That it, you know, it wasn't a huge success, but they sold a lot of iPhone tens. Right. And it, it was enough to actually drive up the average selling price of iPhones across their entire line over seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So for the first time ever, made them a ton of money, and now they're sort of doubling down on not only the form factor but also the price points. So it's it's a thousand dollars and up if you want to go for the max size. The, the one that I want is um, it's eleven hundred fifty dollars, two hundred fifty six gigabyte. So the, and that's not even the max. No, the max is fourteen forty nine. Oh. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. I mean, think about that, fifteen hundred dollars, and you can get payment plans to you know and spread the installments out over twenty four right. months. But I mean, that's still that's what you used to pay for a laptop. Yeah, and I mean now carriers don't subsidize, so no matter how you want to cut it, you're going to be paying the full cost of these phones. Um, and that is a bummer. <laughs> so, so Apple would say, and I, I wrote down some of the um, some of the adjectives. It was beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's uncompromising. It's um, it, 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 it's it's simplistic in its elegance. Um, is it enough? I mean, what is it, what do you feel like you're getting for that thousand um, dollars? So for me, like I just said, I'm planning to buy one, even though I'm also complaining about it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, That's typical iPhone user behavior. <laughs> I hate um, it, and I'm can also, I please have another? Thank you, ma'am, may I have another? I'm also going to be doing that. <laughs> right, and so the reason that I want it is because, first of all, if you want you know, the best camera that Apple offers, you're going to have to get this. It's, it's the only one, uh, the 10 line, has the two sensors on the back. You get the uh, wide angle camera, and then you get the other sensor, which I'm already forgetting what it does because they were talking about it at length with so many different in-depth uh, explanations about it. Yeah, you've got wide angle telephoto on one side and then the depth field sensor, which enables all the AR applications. Right, um, so that for me is one of the main selling points uh, because I mean, I remember even last year seeing the camera on the iPhone 10 and even the 8 Plus for that matter, it's a great camera. Um, especially if you have, like, if you're coming from a 7, a 7S, or by anything earlier, it will blow you away, the difference. Um, you're also going to get, I mean, luckily even the uh, 10R has the faster processor, so the good news is, even if you want the less expensive new phone, you're going to get the same amount of power across the board. You're not going to get the same camera capabilities. Um, and, uh, I mean, Face ID on all three phones, they do share a lot of similarities. Yeah, I was, I, I mean, I was impressed that they use the same CPU. 
on the on the R model. I was expecting it to be more significantly pared down yeah. from from the uh, the 10s and the 10s Max. They save money on the CPU. They save money on the screen because it's an LCD screen, not mm -hmm. an OLED screen. I don't know how big a difference that is because I haven't seen the screen. Yeah. Um, they said it's you know, the most amazing screen uh, LCD screen ever made. Liquid Retina is the new term that they coined to make it seem even more premium. I have no idea what it looks like. <laughs> I'm sure it looks good, but the difference is, I mean, in the uh, the 10s model, you do you are getting a hundred more than a hundred more pixels per inch. Yeah. I think it was something like 448 in the 10s versus 330 something. So, the the tennis is going to be sharper. The um, so and then the other th difference, I think it's uh, aluminum versus stainless steel. So right. the stainless steel frame on the ten. Um, so but let's talk a little bit about those AR functions, which Apple made a big deal about last year, and they still had some great applications this year. Like, is that is that why you would buy a phone? Like, do you feel at all justified in getting that, or you just want a great camera and the AR stuff happens to be built in? I am far more interested in what the rear camera can do. Um, then, you know, like the fun Animoji and other sort of, you know, placing things around the room with AR. All right, what about Touch ID? I was actually kind of hoping that Touch ID would come back. Nope. And that, <laughs> and that Face ID would just be like, it would be an option that was available, but you'd still be able to use your fingerprint. And they were like, they did. I was actually sold on Face ID because I have friends with the, with the 10 and them just being able to go like this is great. Whereas I come out pruny from my shower after workouts and I'm like, ah. It doesn't, it doesn't work. get it. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sold on Face ID. We have a question. Aside from the camera, why would anyone really buy the 10S over the 10R? Um, so that, that is a great question. Um, Double cameras, a little bit of the construction. Yeah, what, what are the main differentiating points? In, in, in the screen. The screen, right. I mean, I will say uh, it's, it's, we can't show anything on camera. And you, even if we had both phones here, it's hard to show. Um, OLED does look significantly better than LCD. It's richer, um, and I'm not even talking about the new phones, I'm just talking about phones that we've seen in the past. Um, if, if you are like heavily interested in the visuals, OLED does look a lot nicer. You know, what, what else is interesting that I'm just realizing now is that they usually tell you what the battery life is in, in total number of hours. Mm -hmm. And in this presentation, they said how much more you were getting this year as opposed to last year. Right. But I think the, um, the, the 10R comparisons were to the um, 8 iPhone plus. 8 Plus, yes. which we don't know what the totals were. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that there may be a little obfuscation there. We don't know that the battery life's gonna perform the same because I think OLED's more energy efficient than, than LCD. Right. So there are a lot of variables there that we won't know until we actually get them in and get to test. Yeah, um, they said uh, the 10S is a half hour longer than the 10. The 10S Max is an hour and a half longer than the 10 and the 10R is an hour and a half longer than the 8 Plus. Oh so, my God. I mean, those are all, yeah, yeah it, I feel like it's designed to confuse us. It was, like, it's, it, they're usually not that, uh, they don't obscure it that much. They're usually very proud of it. Right. And this time, I felt like there might be something in there I that will say out. that, like, part of the big reason why I feel like I have to upgrade now is that my battery on my, my trusty little 7 is starting to, like, I'm starting to have to carry around portable chargers uh, with me. And my boyfriend has a 10, and he can go two days oh, yeah. without charging mm -hmm. the phone. That, and I'm just like, that's not fair. It's literally not I want to go time. two days without having to charge my phone. You deserve I, equal time. I deserve that. Like, it's it's not fair. Yeah, that's, um, and, and again, that's the number one thing that consumers want in the new phones is better battery life. And the best indication of new battery life is not necessarily the handset model. It's the fact that it's a t the phone is two years newer mm -hmm. and it just hasn't worn down. Right. And so that's not something that the vendors can really control that much. Another question. Someone's asking what the key differences between the 10S Max and the Note 9 would be. Like, how do they stack up just based on paper? Um, so it's kind of hard to, difficult to answer right now. Uh, I would say off the top of my head, the main difference is that with the Note 9, you're getting the S Pen. Um, the 10S Max, oof, these names, uh, it doesn't <laughs> work with the Apple Pencil. Um, I feel like that is the biggest reason for anyone in general. Like even if you were comparing the Note 9 to the Galaxy S9, you get it because you want to be able to use the stylus. Um, as far as processing power, 
um, display, battery life, all those things are concerned, that is, uh, we're gonna have to get those phones into the lab to test them here. Because even what Apple quotes, and as we were just talking about, we have no idea what those battery life numbers mean. Until we can run it down the same way that we run down every other phone, we can't tell you how they actually compare in the real world. Yeah, I think size-wise, they're, they're comparable. The big difference is the, is the platform, it's the operating system. Mm -hmm. It's Android, Android versus iOS, but now Apple will have that sort of super chunky, large phablet form factor to please and appeal to that audience, right. which they really haven't had before. They mm -hmm. did a little bit with the Plus, but now they're really owning it. The one th uh, thing I thought was really impressive was when they put the phone side by side, and you saw that that edge-to-edge -edge screen was really, the phone wasn't any bigger, even though the screen was a half inch or an inch bigger than the right. previous model. That was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, that's another reason why the, the 10 is like a, a great platform. Right. Because that didn't exist before. Yeah, totally. Um, I am kind of upset though that the 10R is the only one that you could get all the cool new colors. Yeah. You know, I want a cool color, but I want it on the 10S. <laughs> they've, they've got a history of doing that though, of like right. sort of using color to jazz up the low end model. The 5C. Yeah. That's yeah. the first time they Which did it. also proved extraordinarily effective. Yeah, although that was the only generation that they released them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if Apple is listening, let's see some cool colors. Uh, I don't care as much about the colors, just, I just get cool jazzy cases to. That's true too. Yeah. So, all told today, what was the what was the thing that impressed you the most? Was there is there anything that you came away from and like that that blew me away? Because I'll say what mine was. Okay, what was yours? I'll go you first. I'll go first. And I know it's not, I know neither one of you are going to pick this. Okay. Um, but when Steve Nash came out and he did the demo of the uh, the basketball shooting app that would actually use AR to record your basketball shot and diagnose it and track like, eighteen different points of motion and then tell you whether your release was too long or too short. Like, that is cool. Off-the-shelf technology that's doing that kind of, uh, of movement diagnostic and analysis, it just, that makes me go, look, you know what, that camera has value, this application has value, this, there's a, the processing power in here is really sophisticated, and even if you're just helping your kids play better at Little League, like, that, that just brings it home for me. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, to be completely honest, my mind just went completely blank the second that they started talking about basketball, so. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't hear anything what he said. Uh, we do um, have a question. Why do they still have the notches on the phones? Oh, I mean, so the notch is where they have the, the depth sensing camera and the, a lot of the other things that they're using for Face ID and some AR, so um, until they figure out a better way to hide it, I think it's probably gonna be around for at least at least another generation or two. Yeah, they, they didn't make, if anything, they doubled down on it. Yeah, because now all three new phones have a notch. And a lot of competitors are doing the same thing. Right. So it's, it's, it, it looked really weird a year ago. It looks distinctly less weird this year. Yeah. We've all been Stockholm Syndrome to play. Yeah. So, what, anything that blew you away? Um, actually, the FDA approval really blew me away because that's really tough. That's a tough thing to get, and it just gives a little more legitimacy. They're to, super to proud. Like that, uh, they should be super proud of it. It is not easy to go through that that entire process and to like. It's just not easy to do. It, lad it adds more legitimacy because the entire time I was looking at that uh, presentation, I was like, how am I going to test the accuracy of this? I, how am I going to do... I thought do the exact same thing. Like, how am I going to do that? So, like, you know, if the FDA approves it, that's a strict and rigorous process. It makes me more inclined to trust them, but I won't because I'm skeptical. I'll figure it out. They literally said that this was the only consumer EKG on the market. And I was like, how are we going to know if this thing works? Because we won't have anything to test it against unless we go to a doctor's office. Right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's, that's a thing. So the FDA approval, that really blew me away. Anything impressive today at all? Um, all right, you know what I'm impressed by? I'm impressed by my, my own sort of dead fast commitment to <laughs> Apple because I knew I was going to buy whatever new phone they announced, and I was really hoping for something that was going to blow me away. And to be honest, I'm not blown away, but I'm still going to buy it. Yeah, that um, is the story of Apple, Yeah, right there. And um, I don't think there's any better place to end it. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty much everything you need to know. You should come back to PC Magazine after we actually have these units and we can test them and give you more details and find out how they actually perform. But I think that's the bottom line here, which is that if your phone's two years old? Um, if, yeah, if you have, I would say, don't upgrade from an iPhone 8. Uh, if you have a 7S or older, then yeah, think about upgrading. Yeah. I um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, well, also Sasha Segan is there. 
Uh, he is in Cupertino right now. He's getting hands-ons with all the phones. So we will have his first thoughts, his photos, his videos, his impressions, um, probably later today, early tomorrow morning. Um, and he always has an interesting take too. Indeed. He's literally going into, into hands-on mode. He's been doing it for about an hour now. In another two or three hours, he'll have four hands-on that are written. <laughs> um, we will get those up on the website as soon as possible. You can enjoy them there. All right, guys, this has been great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow for uh, One Cool Thing, 10 o'clock. Filmed right here, different set. <laughs>